Dr. Mindy here, and this is part two of how do you use fasting to balance your hormones. So if you're new to my channel, please go back and watch part one. I have a four part series on fasting and hormones, and I'm walking you through the science behind which fast is gonna help to balance which hormone. Plus I'm giving you some diet tips, I'm giving you some stress management tips, I'm giving you my favorite hormonal hacks. So this video is number two of the series and we're diving into estrogen. How do you balance estrogen? Using fasting, I give you four different fasts in this video, so stay all the way through and my hormonal hacks are at the end. And I just wanna point out this video is really for everybody. So men are dealing with estrogen dominance, women are dealing with estrogen dominance in many cases, and as we move through menopause, we often deal with estrogen decline. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about all those different imbalances of estrogen. This is an information dense video, so you, I would take notes. You might have to go back and watch it again. My goal with these videos is to give you information to be able to manage your lifestyle so that you can start to manage your hormones and so that you remember and you remind yourself of this, how miraculous your body was designed to be. So I love talking hormones, I love talking fasting, and on this video, we go deep on the subject. So as always, I hope it helps. If you're new to my channel, subscribe. If you love it, please send it out into the world. We're trying to bring health back to every human on the planet right now. We need health now more than ever. Enjoy. Okay, so let's dive into estrogen and how you can use fasting as a tool to be able to balance your estrogen levels. The first thing I want you to know is that there, some of you have too much estrogen, this happens with men a lot, and some of you have too little estrogen, this happens with women going through menopause. So as I go through this video, I will point out where there may be some differences in how we approach the different fasts and the different foods. So sit tight on that. The other thing I wanna point out is women who are postmenopausal. what's really interesting is that our estrogen levels really decline, and that decline tends to move adipose tissue from our um, hips to our abdomen, which is, we don't really like that, we don't want that, but that can increase ins insulin sensitivity, it can create more inflammation, it can lead to more cancers, so what's cool about fasting, and I'll show you the four different fasts I would encourage you to do, to, to, especially for a postmenopausal woman, is that we can bring inflammation down, we can improve insulin sensitive, sensitivity. So the fasts I talk about are even more important for you if you're postmenopausal. So I just wanna point that out. Okay, first thing, how do you know if you have too much estrogen compared to too little? Too much estrogen tends to be things like weight gain, bloated, um, mood swings, headaches. Those tend to be more of a too much estrogen situation, whereas too little estrogen tends to be hot flashes, hair loss, and there is some overlap in those symptoms, which is why I am such a fan of testing. So if you really wanna dive into balancing estrogen, like if you're going through menopause or you're going, or um, you've been given a cancer diagnosis or you feel like you're struggling with weight loss, I really recommend getting a Dutch test, which is a hormone test that will tell you exactly if you have too much or too little estrogen. But symptoms can kind of get you in the ballpark, but I also know that the Dutch test like nails it and we know right away. So we'll put a link to the Dutch test in the notes so you guys can find that. Okay, so let's dive in. There are five steps that I look at whenever I wanna balance hormones or even just reverse a condition in somebody. I look at these five lifestyle steps. So hopefully you guys know me that I wanna give you guys solutions to fixing these problems with lifestyle. If you use supplements, I'm a fan of using them temporarily, but I really feel like our lifestyle needs to change in order for us to meet the wherever we are in life. So like over 40 for women, they need to follow these five steps I'm gonna talk about here. Um, men who, who, again, with men who have like a big belly or the man boobs, those tend to be more signs of too much estrogen. 
I'd follow these five steps as, as well. The other thing, again, before I jump into the five steps, I wanna remind you is that when we're dealing with hormones, we're not just dealing with one organ. It's not like the estrogen's just a function of the ovaries. We've got to look at using these five steps to be able to heal the hypothalamus, the pituitary in our brain. We need to be able to heal the ovaries and testes in men. 20% uh, of estrogen production comes from test the testes for men. The rest comes from adipose tissue, which is interesting. Um, we need to look at the adrenals and then specific to estrogen, much of there is excess estrogen living in your fat. So the, the more you carry weight, the more estrogen is going to be put off or, or um, it circulating through your system. And usually it's the harmful estrogen. So again, this is where a Dutch test will tell you what types of estrogen you have. Okay, the five steps. I wanna just get into the bulk of this. Step number one, the absolute fast that everybody needs to be doing to balance estrogen is intermittent fasting. For women going through menopause or women over 40, our growth hormone dramatically declines as we hit the age of 40. As growth hormone goes down, so growth hormone helps with estrogen signaling. So what estrogen signaling means is the ability for your cells to receive estrogen and for the communication from your brain to your ovaries to be able to have that communication be optimal. So when growth hormone goes down, we get that signaling for estrogen goes off. So what fast improves growth hormone? Intermittent fasting. So every day, 13 to 15 hours, we should be intermittent fasting, most of us, that, uh, that's whether you're a man with too much estrogen or a woman going through menopause with too little, that needs to be the foundational fast that we do 99.9% .9 of the time, okay? Now, I wanna add a little caveat to that. I think you guys know that I've quoted a study about women with breast cancer that if they fast over 13 hours every day, their chances of reoccurrence of breast cancer um, are improved by 70%, which means they are less likely to have a reoccurrence. 70% is a lot. So I will link the, the, some really cool studies about that in the notes if you wanna take that to your oncologist. I know I have a patient who is going through breast cancer treatment right now and Kaiser taught her this study, which is so cool. The study was actually really neat. It was a human study done on over 2,000 women who had gone through uh, uh, breast cancer treatment and they found that their, their reoccurrence of breast cancer dramatically went down when they did 13 hours of fasting. So cool. Okay, the second fast I want you to think about is autophagy fasting. So remember that autophagy fasting is 17 hours and it is our way of asking the intelligence inside our cells to repair themselves. So this is great because if we have too much of the harmful estrogens, and most of us do because the world we live in is very estrogen dominant. We have in estrogen uh, uh, mimickers and disruptors in like all over the place, in our clothes, in our food, um, in our beauty products. So we wanna really lean into autophagy fasting so that we can constantly be repairing ourselves. So 17 hours, I recommend at least once a week Maybe twice, if you can do twice a week of autophagy fasting, that would be awesome. The other thing I want you to remember about autophagy fasting is that something, when you stimulate autophagy, sometimes you stimulate something called apoptosis, which is cellular death. So when you flip on that intelligence, that intelligence may look around the cell and say, hey, it's really messed up in here. This is turning into a cancer cell. I'm gonna go ahead and kill this cell. That is great when we're dealing with estrogen imbalances, especially too much toxic estrogen. We do not want that cell to, to replicate if it's heading towards becoming a cancer cell. So 17 hours, you're gonna stimulate autophagy, you're gonna stimulate apoptosis. This is just a safeguard fast. So I would be doing it one or, or twice a week, and you can do it more if you want. Okay, the third fast that I love for balancing estrogen is 24-hour fasting. 
You have something called your estrobilome, which is the microbiome that breaks estrogen down, and you need that to be healthy to manage estrogen right. So the 24-hour fast really makes sure that we are rebooting and resetting the microbiome on a regular basis and making it very favorable for good bacteria. There's 60 different types of bacteria that break estrogen down. We want to make it a friendly environment in our gut so that they can efficiently do that. So once a week, 24-hour fast would be awesome. And then the last fast I'll mention is the 14-hour fast, uh, dry fast, which for 30 days, a 14-hour dry fast has shown to turn off genes for breast cancer and turn on genes for DNA repair, lipid metabolism, glucose metabolism. Remember, as your estrogen goes down, we don't metabolize glucose as well. So a 14-hour dry fast can be helpful. Okay, that's all fast. That's like how you can use fast for all of this. Now I'm gonna quickly go through the other steps. So step number two is diet. When you're looking at estrogen, I want you to be aware that when we're eating synthetic chemicals, pesticide sprayed uh, foods, that you are those are all endocrine disruptors and they can uh, raise your harmful estrogen levels up. So the most important thing is to get off the toxic food and I did an inc uh, incredible interview with Dr. Kate Shanahan, who is a family physician who is really on a path to teach people how to get off the toxic oils. She strongly feels for estrogen balance, we need to get rid of the, get off the three most harmful oils. She calls them the three C's, cottonseed, canola, and corn oil. So make sure you subscribe to the Resetter podcast so you can see that episode when it comes out because it was an incredible discussion about how these oils are throwing our hormones off. So get off those oils and then add in some good oils. So flax oil, we love Andrea's seed oils. It's very pure oil that this is a phytoestrogen. So it's gonna raise the good estrogen, especially in menopausal women, it's gonna bring that good estrogen up. So make sure you add some good oils in. Okay, step number three of building a lifestyle to balance this estrogen out is you gotta look at your microbiome. So make sure you're eating, again, I say this all the time, the sauerkrauts and the kimchi. Make sure you're feeding your good bacteria, these 60 bacteria that break down estrogen. Make sure you're feeding them things like leeks and onions and asparagus and chicory root. Those will feed those little guys inside your gut and they'll make them replicate so they can break down especially the harmful estrogens. So those bacteria are a key part of balancing estrogen. So don't, don't forget about them. Step number four of building a lifestyle is you want to minimize your toxic load. You've got to work on detoxing. So I've done a lot of videos on this. Make sure that you are getting, looking at your beauty products, that they're not contributing to high levels of poor estrogen. Um, look at creating a chemical-free life. I've done a lot of videos on that. And then the fifth step is managing stress. So remember the hormonal hierarchy. When cortisol goes up, insulin starts to become difficult to manage. When insulin's difficult to manage, now we've got the sex hormones all out of whack. Now, as estrogen is going up and down in a menopausal woman, insulin's already hard to manage. So we don't need any more stress to make insulin any harder to manage. So go watch the video I did on adrenal fatigue. I put some good tips in there um, and really build yourself a toolbox for managing stress because, and I want you to understand that it's so necessary. Self-care right now is so necessary more than ever in order for you to be able to balance those sex hormones. Last thing, this is a bonus tip I want to tell you. I have some favorite hormonal hacks, and as I go through this series of videos for you, I want to share each hormone, what are my favorite hacks. So this is my new favorite hack for estrogen. Um, it is a natural estrogen cream. You can find it on Revelation Health. We'll put a link in the notes, and you just put it right on your abdomen or any skin part, and it raises estrogen up. So if you're a menopausal woman, you know that your skin's dry, your, your joints are dry, your mucosal membranes are dry, I'd really encourage you to try some of, it's called Natural Radiance. Again, we'll put a link in the notes. 
Um, another one of my favorite uh, tips or hacks is something called a V-Fit put out by Joylux. This is for menopausal women. Uh, please go listen to the podcast I did with Susan Bratton on what happens to a woman's libido as she goes through menopause. It is intimately tied to estrogen and there is a product called a V-Fit. It's on Dr. Mindy's favorites. Go listen to my, the podcast with Susan Bratton where we talk about how women can start to bring estrogen levels back up. We can improve our sex drive. We can increase lubrication in mucosal membranes through this V-Fit uh, red light therapy. Super cool. So, and then of course, my other favorite hack for estrogen, and this goes for men who are estrogen uh, dominant, is we've got to support those adrenals. Your adrenals will help balance the sex hormones, so make sure you're supporting those. So let me know if that's helpful. I know it's a lot of information, and when we talk hormones, it's so hard for me to just say, do this, because there's a lot here, which is why I'm bringing you this four-part four series. So. As always, let me know if that's helpful. This is one of those videos, you may have to go back and watch that again because I just put out a massive checklist of things you can be doing with your lifestyle to improve your estrogen levels. I hope it helps.